Hey everybody, um, I thought I'd show a video on the digital outputs uh, on the DMP A6 um, and which ones to use for a DAC and which ones to use for an AVR um, and also some of their limitations and insights into some of these ports. Um, the first thing I will mention is there's two USB ports in the back of the DMP A6. The first one is not an output, it's actually an input, so that's where you would stick a USB stick um, or an external hard drive or whatever may be, may be with your music. Um, don't use that for your DAC because it's an input, not an output. Now the one below it, which is where I have my DAC connected, is an output. That is what I would recommend um, you would use, and primarily because it has the highest bit rate of all the digital outputs on um, the DMP A6, um, specifically up to 768 kilohertz or 32 bit, as well as DSD 512 native, and it supports MQA. And so if you go to the settings screen, you can kind of see uh, the USB DAC output, and it has a variety of options you can control. Uh, volume, uh, whether or not the DMP A6 is, is responsible for volume or, volume or your DAC. I would recommend your DAC, and I'll show you why, particularly when you use MQA. You can have different transport protocols, D2P, which is sending DSD to PCM, it essentially converts it, or DOP, which is sends DSD over PCM, or native, um, which is what I tend to use. And I've heard so many others can do compression, um, the conversion alone, so you're messing with the digital signal, it might um, impact quality. I don't know if you can actually hear it, but some folks have mentioned it, so I'm curious to your thoughts, uh, leave some comments on that. Um, but um, the other thing um, that you can control is whether it supports MQA, and so that's what I've set up, for example. And so in my case, I have an MQA track loaded at the top here, and so I'll press that. And so now you can see the DMP A6 rec recognizes it as MQA. You can see that if I now go to my DAC, it also recognizes it as MQA. And that's why I use my DAC to control volume. Now, why is that? That is because the digital out volume is at its maximum. And it's the only way you get MQA out of it. And now the second port are essentially the same. Now the second two, they essentially operate the same way. One's a coax, so you need a coax cable, and the other one's an optical uh, output, so you need an optical cable for that. Um, these also have a pretty high bit rate overall, um, but not as high as the USB port. Um, they specifically uh, go up to 192 kilohertz or 24 bit for PCM, and um, only up to DSD64 um, using uh, the specific protocol um, uh, called DOP. And so if you go to the settings screen for that one, um, you can see under SPDIF, which is essentially that whole port, these are the audio kind of formats it supports. In both cases, um, it cannot do native DSD, so it has to either send it as PCM or send it over PCM. And then the second thing is it can only go up to 192 kilohertz, which is what most streaming services provide. Um, you know, you should be fine, but if you have music higher and you want to stream at a higher bit rate, it cannot go beyond that. So that is a limitation. Um, of SPDIF, essentially optical um, uh, or otherwise. And so worth thinking about. What I would call out here is these do not have a ground. And so what that actually means is it actually doesn't have or, uh, noise or possible interference, which is possible with a USB cable or anything else. They do have a ground and so you can have noise. Um, and it's so therefore, if you are noticing noise or issues, um, switching to these is a non-grounded um, signal, and that's why you, you basically use coax for your television. Um, and so that is uh, one thing there. And then the last output uh, I wanted to show you is essentially an HDMI port. What is actually quite cool about the Eversolo is that it has an HDMI output. Um, it's audio only. It even says so on there. So it does not output video. Uh, it doesn't have that option um, per se. But if you have an AVR, an audio video receiver for your home theater or for your television and you watch movies with that, that's a very good option to connect um, the EverSolo to your um, to your AVR essentially. And so you know, it has also its own configuration settings. If you go to HMI output, um, it has options to say output auto um, P PCM or DSD. It has auto settings. You can see here that it, it, it supports native DSD to PCM, and so it kind of figures it out um, which one to use. Um, and so that's a really good option if you're trying to connect to your home theater. 
Um, and that's really it. So one thing to kind of showcase what those options are. You have a choice of many outputs. If I had an audio video receiver that I'm connecting, I would probably just connect it to the HDMI port and use that. Um, easier, AVR will know what to do with that. Um, you have a pretty good uh, bit rate up to 192 kilohertz or DSD64 native. And so, you know, it'll be fine. If you connect a DAC, to be honest, I would just stick with the USB port, unless you have some noise and interference, and then you can actually pick one of the other options. But the reason why I picked this is it simply has the highest bit rate, it supports MQA, and I can do uh, what I need to do. Um, and I've certainly transmitted up to DSD you know, 512, and it works fine. And so, uh, it's essentially unlimited in many aspects, um, and that's really it. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any other questions or leave it in the comments, and um, hope you enjoyed this particular video. Thanks.